hope you are thoroughly, thoroughly confused at this point. Um, <laughs> there's also uh, another thing I find interesting is that they, uh, they subdivide cholesterol into two categories, and you hear good and bad cholesterol. First of all, cholesterol is thought of as a fat. It's not a fat. It's more like an alcohol. Cholesterol is an alcohol, and it's a precursor to steroid hormones such as cortisol and uh, testosterone and things like that. So it's a very important molecule. Uh, those hormones do a few important things, and you might not want to go to war against the precursor to all those important hormones. I wouldn't, wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> but, interestingly, um, these HDL and LDL, which are called good cholesterol and bad cholesterol, they're not cholesterol. <laughs> LDL and HDL stand for high and low density lipoproteins. They're actually proteins that carry cholesterol around. Um, so it's kind of like uh, calling a horse a cowboy. <laughs> um, good and bad cholesterol are not cholesterol, they're lipoproteins. Um, again, you have a whole different school of thought that believes that altering the ratios between HDL and LDL is really what it's all about. And it's certainly better at getting an overall risk assessment than just getting your average serum cholesterol and going to town with that and you know flipping a coin and saying, oh, okay, my cholesterol is 250, I must have high heart disease risk. Refining it to HDL and LDL ratios was helpful, but it's not the whole story. And for example, I recently learned while reading Staffan Lindeberg's Food and Western Disease, he goes in and he gets all this data from the Catavans, and he has the actual amount of HDL, he has the amount of LDL, uh, he goes and he gets triglycerides, which is another factor, and they're all the same. They're the same as the averages found in all the countries in the world that suffer from massive rates of heart disease. Triglycerides were well over 100, and HDL and LDL were not noticeably different, nor were total cholesterol numbers from everybody else's. Yet they have zero, zero heart disease. Not low heart disease or low risk or 20% less risk than somebody with this profile, but zero zero, uh, uh, let me repeat that, zero risk of heart disease and zero heart disease, even though they have the same risk profiles as somebody in a Western country. Now, obviously, there's more complexity to this. And uh, anyways, I'm not going to go on and on and on with this forever, but if you think that you got this whole cholesterol, saturated fat, uh, HDL, LDL ratio thing figured out, and you know exactly what you need to do and exactly what you know, the perfect uh, doctor visit is supposed to look like on paper to minimize your risk of heart disease, you're probably wrong and you probably miss some major, major glitches and errors in the entire theory of how heart disease is developed, where it comes from, and what we can do to prevent and reverse the disease. So anyways, that's some food for thought for you today. Thanks again. This is Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health.